Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to take another look at this uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire Ophoro saddle tank, um, often referred to as a pug loco, um, that I mangled with uh, super glue. There's lots of discussion of what the heck I managed to do in a previous video. I'll stick a link here if I remember. Um, but basically I tried to fit work plates and got super glue everywhere and had to kind of try and repaint the cab sides and it was all bumpy and horrible. Um, so yeah. Um, which is a pain because these models in, um, I mean this is a DAPO version of the model, it's quite old, um, but the same tooling is still in use by Hornby and you can get it in kind of BR black, LMS black, but this Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Freight livery, it's this double red lining, um, is really quite rare. I have a mint one up on eBay at the moment, um, but uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a pain that I, I, mangled, I mangled this one. Um, so my plan was that given I'd mangled it, there was no uh, there was no value essentially left in this model. I can't I can't sell it uh, particularly in this in this state. Nobody's gonna. Well, it's certainly not for the for, the, for what it should be worth as a as a as a, a slightly rarer model. Um, so my plan is to fit it with the high level um, kits chassis chassis kit, um, which gives you a cab without a motor in it um, and lots of cab detail uh, and better running potentially. Um, and then heavily weather it so I get a kind of um, something that's a bit more true to how it would have appeared in in real life um, but <clears throat> before it's worth spending the money on the kit um, I need to check whether I could um, at least repair these these cab sides a little bit um, this side's not too bad if you look at it under the light there are some lines and stuff that's a combination of the super glue that I got everywhere and then me kind of trying to hand paint um, it back on before I was up to using uh, spray cans of paint or, or an airbrush to, to do the painting. Um, so um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this and it was, you know, I did the video uh, about the super glue uh, last week but the, the, the model was probably going to go back into a box for a while but um, somebody left a comment and I can't remember while well, recording this now who that was apologies um you can find it in the in the previous video but thank you for the comment um about using acetone um to remove the super glue a suggestion was that this would this would melt the glue which makes sense because acetone is what's in uh, nail polish um nail varnish remover which is essentially glue um in some in some cases certainly you know if you're fixing fake nails on and stuff that kind of thing um now i did I used to have some acetone that was actually a horrible pink colour in the house that was um, designed for getting off nail nail polish. My wife had bought it. We uh, she doesn't usually um, wear nail nail varnish and things, but we'd been to a wedding and she she bought some to uh, to be able to do it. But I used that up cleaning other models and things um, a long time ago. So um, I went ahead and bought some more, <clears throat> and I've given it a try. Now the first thing I did, other than removing the cab from the model, um, was that I removed the glazing. Um, Clear plastic can often get easily marked with chemicals and things and um, I want to be able to hopefully put this back. Um, it's not the end of the world if I do destroy this, I mean it just unclipped so it's, it was nice and easy but if I do destroy it then you might remember in the other models I've used this micro crystal clear um, to do the glazing. Um, so you just put basically put a little bit on the end of a cocktail stick, run it around the edge of the, the window, pull it across and it makes a kind of film which when it dries uh, looks like uh, glass. Um, so on windows this small um, that's that's perfectly perfectly feasible um, but you see this is the side that was actually the better of the two sides and you can still see it's horribly lumpy and streaky um, so I went ahead and I attempted to fix the other side now a uh, number of things to say so first of all it worked quite well it's got rid of all the big lumps of super glue that were still on this side if you go back and watch the other video you'll be able to see um, quite how bad it was. Um, it still looks a bit rough but actually when I run my finger over it it's nice and smooth I think it's just the fact that um, it needs proper paint uh, because one of the things I found was that <clears throat> the black plastic part is actually painted black as well as being black plastic and you can see this here so I, I once I'd figured that out I tried it on this piece here which um, I think will get cut away the high level chassis well, the high level instructions, the high level, ugh, the instructions for the high level kit suggest that most of the locos didn't have this filled in, and so they suggest cutting it away. So I give it a bit of a wipe with a cotton bud with some um, acetone on, it, and you can tell it lifted the paint off here as well. 
Um, so it lifted the super glue, it lifted the paint. Um, unfortunately, it also damaged the transfers around the edge. I thought these were quite um, would be quite hard, would be quite well stuck on often on on models. Getting off the lining or the numbers is really tricky because if you want to paint over it, you don't want bumps where they were. Um, and they often takes quite a lot of effort to get rid of them. This a slight touch of the acetone, and you can see the um, it must just be a transfer. It just melted away. Um, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, I've also just brush painted a very thin layer of uh, this back on, mostly because I wanted to um, see how it would look rather as as black rather than grey. Um, so some of these marks might be brush marks, but as I say, it's very smooth. Uh, but it's why also the works plate still looks black, because obviously the acetone stripped all the paint off the brass. Um, so I'm in two minds what to do about this. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if I'm going to cut this and add pieces inside the cab as part of the detailing, uh, and potentially paint the upper half um, ivory or cream, um, as I say, most of the... You tend to find most of the um, cabs on locals had a, a lighter coloured upper half. Um, I'll have to check whether that was definitely the case uh, for the LMYR. I have a book uh, somewhere. But yeah, I think I'll probably um, need to repaint most of this anyway. So the, the question is, do I... Um, what I might end up doing is stripping off all the transfers, painting it black uh, and doing the detailing. Um, and then I will have to see whether A, I can find new lining transfers and if I can't then I'll just leave it black um, and we're intending to heavily weather the body anyway at which point most of these lining transfers will disappear <coughs> under muck. Now I know that's a bit of a shame um, the whole point of doing this to an LMYR one with the renumbering was it to make it look like an LMYR one but um, I think that's probably probably the way to go um, as I say I'd mangled this already anyway I, I don't want to use it or look at it particularly when it was covered in um, in badly painted thick paint and and super glue and stuff so um, I'm not too fussed and as I say it's a shame because this is a slightly more expensive rarer model than the the Dapol and Hornby ones you can get now uh, in BR black and LMS black etc but it is what it is I did the damage I just have to I just have to live with it um, but it does mean that I think I'm fairly happy I can clean these up enough that when I then repaint, um, I will hide the original the original damage. So I think that's that's what I'm going to do. So I have to I have to double check that number eight, which is what I read numbered this as. If you can if you can see that, oh, the camera will focus. Number eight, um, whether that had a, the cab side filled in or not. If it doesn't, then I'll cut it out. And I also have to work out what uh, what colours this will end up. But it's things like you know it needs repainting anyway because I mean the spectacle surrounds would probably be brass. Um, and, and the whistle would be brass and things like that. So the whole thing needs a repaint. So um, I think I can probably get away with leaving most of the the body um, with the transfers on and just touching in details. Um, hopefully, um, obviously, once the you know the chassis itself will need painting because that will be a metal replacement. Um, but that's the plan. Uh, so thank you for the suggestion for acetone. That worked really nicely on the super glue. Um, and as I say, I'm not quite sure when I'll get around to ordering the kit. Um, but hopefully there'll be, um, and it's another model I can I can progress on the workbench when I get bored with any of the others or hit a hit a road bump like I kind of have with the the Welsh Pool Loco. Um, looking at the motion and stuff has been a bit of a, a bit of a, a kind of pause on that, so we shall see. Uh, but yeah, um, that's where we are with this one. Uh, the acetones worth a trip, worth, worth worked well. Um, so we'll see what the yeah we'll see when I get round to ordering the, the chassis kit. Thanks for watching. Um, I just thought I'd say that um, I've now had my book out to have a look um, just to double check what I'm doing with this model when I get there. Uh, so this is Lancashire New Yorkshire Railway Locomotive by, ooh, by Barry C. Lane. I've not got enough space for it on my desk. Um, but if we turn to the page on the pugs, um, you can see lots of uh, pictures and details. As I say, not really enough space to get this under the camera properly. Um, but... Um, yeah, looking at all the drawings and all the pictures, as you can see here, none of them that I can see really had the boarded up uh, cab side. I've managed to find one photo uh, where it did, and that's one of the ones that was sold um, it after after they sold away from the railway. Um, this is number 19, 
uh, known Bassett by its new owners, and then Prince by the next owners. Um, it had a boarded up cab side, but none of the others uh, appeared to do. Uh, you can see also in this book, paid this table here, uh, number eight, which is what I've numbered it, was built in uh, May 1910. Uh, and scrapped in 1957 if I'm going across the columns correctly. Uh, the other numbers here are the LMS number and then the BR number. I'm not quite sure why I chose number 8 um, for this. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any particular significance. Um, these are the photos of the ones where they had the, the funny spark arrestor that was my first uh, trip into modelling. So you can kind of see how that um, compares. Uh, it's not bad. Um, but you can also see that on these uh, these photos, uh, no, they're absolutely filthy uh, and no chance of seeing any uh, lining really that I can see. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's obviously in an LM LMS numbering, so I'm not quite sure when that was taken. But this this photo was taken in 1916, apparently. Um, so still seems to have the the, the just the um, language and Yorkshire works plates, and I can't see any uh, lining on that whatsoever. So I think if I just paint them, if I repaint it, the cab black and then make the whole thing absolutely filthy, uh, we should be fine. So that looks like a like a good plan and the fact that I've kind of removed some of the lining with the with the, the acetate, uh, acetone, sorry, uh, doesn't seem to have been a problem. So there we go, that's the plan. Thanks.